Hi there. I'm uh, trying to watch what I'm doing here, but I've turned the camera around, so I can't see anything at the moment. I'm just hoping that my stream will start running on my laptop. Uh, chat's up live, so hopefully you will also say something in there. Hi, Ken. Good to see you. Hope you're doing all right. My video is completely out of sync with me, so I'm going to have to ignore that and get on with things. So since yesterday, I put in the, um, the little striking knobs on here. These buttons will protect the plane uh, when I'm setting it using a hammer. So one on the front there, lined up with this neck so that uh, the force goes straight through and it's not, uh, not leverage giving torque on this and possibly going to break it. So that, that'll strike this way to uh, set the iron a bit deeper and then one on the back here to help withdraw the iron. Wedge finished off, a little bit of shaping on the end there and uh, that's all ready to go. I tested it again, it's still working, uh, thank goodness. <laughs> so now I'm going to finish it. Um, I'm going to use board linseed oil. I'm going to give it a couple of coats. So I'll just better show you one of those coats here today because obviously I'll leave it to to set in for a bit. Really is easy to apply. Um, as far as the wedge goes, I'm not going to apply it on the top and underside of it um, because I want a bit of friction uh, against the iron and against the body of the plane so the wedge doesn't come out. Um, we can always remove it with some white spirits if it does soak through from the faces. Morning Lego Man. I think in the past I may have known your name, um, but uh, with so many people I do forget. But anyway, good morning to you. Thanks for putting those links onto the yesterday's video. I haven't had a chance to look yet, but I will be, because I hadn't heard of the, the one guy. I suggest anyone else here check those links out as well. So this is taking a long time with the wedge because I'm trying to protect those couple of surfaces. And I'll just leave that for 5-10 minutes and then I'll rub off all the excess, leave it again for perhaps an hour or two and then give it another application, see if it wants to soak any more in. Now notice on my little cloth here, um, it's dark, it's picked up a bit of stain from the African blackwood, so I don't want to use that directly on the on the beach body. It's dirty enough from me handling it as much as I have done. And so on the body, I want to put uh, the oil on everything except the mortise. Morning Michael. So we've got a couple of anonymous people watching. If you've got access to the chat, do uh, just say who you are. Be nice to know. And since applying oil to something is a little bit boring, ask some, ask some questions and I'll see if I can answer those. Hi Matt and hi Clem. Clem, yeah, sure, watch it later. So I'm putting plenty of oil on here. And you'll notice I've protected the bench. I prefer to put uh, Danish oil on my bench, so I don't want to get the linseed oil on there. I 
I'll tell you something about the striking buttons and how I made those. I used a little mini lathe. You could actually do it in um, a drill. If you secure your drill somewhere or if you've got a, a pillar drill, bench drill, just chuck in a little piece, chuck, literally chuck in the chuck. Um, little piece of ebony it was I had. Turned it round. I used um, a parting tool just to rough round it. And then I used the skew chisel to turn um, a thick mushroom dome on the top. And uh, so it's got a, a stem, which is the tenon, uh, five mil. And then it's got this larger button on the top. I've just set those into mortises I drilled into the ends of the plane. And I put a little tiny dab of glue on there just to try and make sure they don't fall out. They're quite raised and that looks a little bit odd maybe. Certainly the back one it's an advantage to be raised because of where the, the um, wedge goes in here and to be able to get the hammer in, you're coming at a bit of an angle. And I don't want to strike the, the uh, body of the plane, which is the reason I've got these on here. So having the higher button like that means I can strike it, keeping away from the wedge really easily and still get a good blow on. Morning, Coldwood Cowboy. I'm glad they've been interesting. I did wonder at times, but they do go on quite a long time. It's, uh, it's very slow woodworking when you're trying to, A, do the live stream and interact with people. B, I'm trying to film it for a, uh, a short build video of everything together, which reminds me I need to turn my camera on now. So I'm trying to video it as well. And uh, I'm also writing an article about this, so I'm taking photographs throughout the whole thing. <clears throat> so I've got about four things all going on in my mind, plus actually doing the woodwork. I'm just going to be a little bit quiet for the next, perhaps, uh, 10 seconds whilst I'm filming a little bit of this for the video. A little bit of the application of the oil. Okay, so videoing done. That's one less thing to think about. Uh, Michael, how important are the buttons? Does it depend on the wood you use for the body? Oh, wood. Um, certainly, uh, they're useful because, first of all, uh, you don't want to damage uh, the plane you've made. Um, just getting dents in it is not really great. Um, so it, it avoids that. Secondly, some hardwoods you'll find are quite brittle. They might make great planes, but if they're a little bit brittle, if you hit the, the body, then you'll break the body and bits will chip out. And if you use softwood, striking it with a hammer, uh, it's going to dent really easily. 
So having a hardwood little button on there, that takes all the all the grief from the hammer. Um, these ebony ones may well, they'll be quite brittle as well, they may eventually get damaged. But I can flush cut them off, drill them out and put a new one in. Don't find too many softwood planes, to be honest. Normally find they're made of a, of a hardwood, but they will still dent. You're striking them with a, with a hammer. It's a tricky bit here, I'm trying to avoid oiling the bed. Tell me whether the, um, the stream is better, the video is a bit better today, because I say I've turned the camera around the other way. I'm streaming from my phone, seems to be the best uh, camera I've got that will stream directly to YouTube. Be nice to know whether you can actually see quite clearly what I'm doing. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, I know it's it's got more uh, more pixels on the back camera, but I'm not sure whether the bandwidth was good enough on my broadband to see any improvement. That's good to know. So I've got plenty of oil on that. Talking with you and videoing etc. has taken me such a long time that I can start to probably rub that off now. bit of background. This is the first proper plane that I've made. Uh, I made a, a softwood, actually talking about softwood, made a softwood prototype for a shoulder plane years and years ago, over a decade ago now. And uh, it worked quite well with the limitations of it being softwood and the fact that it was a prototype that was held together with screws I always promised myself I'd make uh, another one. I was going to make a copy of it, but I uh, didn't quite do that. Let me show you, because I've got it out at the moment. It's this one here. You may have seen it in, um, in a video at some point, because sometimes... Now this is a different size from my other shoulder planes and sometimes it's more useful to use. Being softwood, uh, the bed does deflect quite a bit when the wedge is in, so I was flattening it quite a bit until it became stable. And it might look alright from that side, but on this side, with all those screws, it's not, uh, not great. So that's somewhere to start. I mean, if you want to make a plane and, uh, you know, it's your first time doing it, there's nothing wrong with using some softwood. Uh, you can work out all your shaping, especially good for, for doing lots of different ones, changing the shape to get it nice and comfortable in the hand. This one is, is a lovely shape, but it's, it's quite similar to others I've seen. So I wanted to do something a bit different. And I went for something that hopefully I think looks a bit more dynamic. 
it's also lovely in the hand, uh, which is one of the benefits of being wood as well. Wood tends to feel much better in the hand. So I'm just going to wipe off excess and I'll do this a few times over the next half an hour, hour or so. Just take the excess off, then leave it for a while, come back and give it another coat, see if it'll soak any more in. Bit of auto focus. Yeah, I'll, maybe I'll be able to change that on the phone, quite possibly. Thank you. Uh, I did think of different bed angles for the eye. Didn't really work with the dynamic look because I would have had an iron or a wedge coming out the top. So um, I decided I'd do bevel up and I put a 10 degree angle here which kept the iron low enough like so that I could have the wedge coming out underneath the, uh, the curve on the rear of the, the, the body itself. Uh, so far it seems to work okay. I mean I haven't used it that much. I've tested it a few times and it works and it's comfortable. Uh, certainly very good in, uh, in pine, working pine. Probably my next plane. Now, I said I'll do a, a short series. People keep requesting other planes so it's, it's getting a bit longer at the moment. But what I wanted to do was uh, a scraper plane. So I'm going to have the iron coming straight out the top in that one. So I think you're doing a chisel plane. Somebody suggested a router plane. There are lots of videos on router planes. So um, I don't know. I don't need one, but uh, I do have a few ideas for one. So possibly I'll do a router plane. And it might be nice to do a, a smoother as well. Okay, so I'll leave that for a little bit now. Check the chat again. <laughs> Paint it British Racing Green. Yeah, why not? I'm quite happy with the look of it. Um, I've got, I've been lucky enough to accumulate lots of scraps of of woods from all around the world so might be nice to make some planes out of different woods I don't have um, a, a green one uh, I do have a bit of green heart but it's not doesn't particularly look green as far as building this uh, particular plane. This is probably the last live stream on that. But uh, somebody asked me in one of the earlier streams if I was making the iron for it. I think you've already seen that I have an iron. Uh, it's a Clifton iron which I bought when I was making this plane. So um, I don't need an iron but uh, there was interest in making one so I'll perhaps be making an iron for it but I don't know whether I'll be able to live stream that because with sparks flying everywhere, if I'm trying to video it and chat, um, trying to work a probably an angle grinder I'll be using, probably be a bit dangerous to try and live stream at the same time. But maybe when I'm actually doing the final shaping and sharpening of it, I'll be able to do a live stream on that.
Have I ever worked with boxwood? I have. Um, I've got some. The one I've got has actually been turned a bit already, so it's, it's in the round. And I don't think, trying to remember now, it's been underneath the lathe for, I probably haven't touched it for 10 years. Um, it might be big enough to make a small plane. I'll check that one out. Certainly nice. I've uh, repaired a rebate plane with boxwood um, on the sole. And uh, yeah, it's lovely to work with. Right, get typing. Any last questions before I finish off? And go and get myself a coffee. Any questions at all? Bottom of a moulding plane? Yes, I certainly could. I don't think the bits are that big, but I could always join them together. Yeah, I wish I could provide coffee. It'd be a, a much better live stream, wouldn't it, if I could give drinks out and some biscuits. Although maybe not for you, Ken. No biscuits. Okay, guys. Thanks very much. Uh, see you next time. Cheerio.